In this video we're going to look at how we might choose an appropriate continuous probability model for a random variable and also how we might have to adapt our choice in the light of the data that we've got. So to begin with I'd like you just to pause the video and just have a look through the table here where we look at the two continuous distributions that we've investigated in this unit and their main properties and examples of when we might use them. When you've just had a rescan through this and familiarized yourself with this again, then press continue. So in this video we're going to look at the a department store which wishes to discover how long customers actually spent inside the store. The time spent in the store by a thousand people entering the store between 10 o'clock and 4 o'clock on a Friday in late November were recorded by a team of data collectors and the resulting relative frequency histogram is shown in the diagram below. Now the first thing I want to do is determine whether either the continuous uniform distribution or the normal distribution would provide a satisfactory model for this data. So have a think about that. If it was going to be the continuous uniform distribution we'd expect all of the relative frequencies to be the same or roughly the same in the relative frequency histogram. They're clearly not. So we're certainly going to reject the possibility of the continuous uniform distribution being appropriate. If the normal distribution was appropriate, we'd be looking for a nice symmetrical bell-shaped curve. And this is anything else, anything but symmetrical or bell-shaped. So again, we will reject the normal distribution as a sensible dis um, model for the time spent inside the store. When the customers left the store they were asked how many items they had bought whilst in the store and the statisticians then decided to split the customer customers into two groups. Group A bought no items from the store approximately a third of the customers were in this group and the relative frequencies for the time spent by these customers are shown in the diagram. Now in this case, whilst the relative frequencies aren't all exactly the same, they do all appear to be roughly the same. So for this set of data, it might be appropriate to model it by the continuous uniform distribution on the interval from 5 to 20. So for TA, that is the time spent by a customer who buys no items in the store, we might use the continuous uniform distribution on the interval 520. The probability density function for that model is easy to draw. It's just a flat horizontal line between 5 and 20. And remember that the area underneath the curve has to equal 1. So the height of this is going to be 1 15th. And if we want to find what's the probability that a customer spends more than 15 minutes in the store, that's going to be the area between 15 and 20 underneath the graph. So that is the area of a rectangle of base 5 and height 1 15th. So we've got the probability is 1 third. Now group B were all the customers who bought at least one item from the store. And because there were a third of the customers who didn't buy any items, they therefore know that approximately two thirds of the customers were in this group. We've got the relative frequency diagram for the time spent is shown together with the summary statistics for the data are shown. 
So, the first thing then we want to do is we want to suggest a suitable probability model for the time spent by a customer who buys at least one item in the store. Now in this case we can see that the relative frequency histogram is pretty well symmetrical. It's not far off being a bell-shaped curve, so it's certainly worth our while having a look at how it compares with a normal distribution with the same mean, let's say 32, and a similar standard deviation. And we'll use 6 as the value for the standard deviation. So we're saying we're looking at a suitable model being the normal distribution with mean 32 and standard deviation 6 and superimposed now on our graph we've got the normal curve with a mean of 32 and a standard deviation of 6 and that does seem to describe the data collected by the statisticians quite reasonably. So sketch of the graph is simply a normal distribution type curve with the mean clearly identified at 32. The probability that a customer spends more than 15 minutes in the store if we're using this model is going to be the probability that t is greater than 15 for a normal distribution with mean 32 and standard deviation 6 is a straightforward calculator calculation and gives me 0.9977. Now assuming that these models for TA and TB are correct and that a third of the customers who enter the store buy nothing and two-thirds of them buy at least one item we can obtain an estimate for the probability that a random person entering the store will spend at least 15 minutes in the store. Because if they're going to spend at least 15 minutes in the store, either the customer buys nothing, in which case TA is the appropriate model. So either we've got the customer buys nothing and TA is bigger than 15, or the customer buys something, in which case TB will be the, the appropriate model for the time spent by this particular customer. And we've got those probabilities already. We've got probability the customer buys nothing is one third. And we discovered that the probability that TA is bigger than 15 is one fifth. The probability that a customer buys something is two thirds. And then we have got for a customer who does buy something, the probability that TB is bigger than 15 is 0.9977. So our expression for the probability is a third times a fifth plus two thirds times 0.9977, which gives me 0.732. Now let's have a think about the reliability of this estimate for a person entering the store a week or two later, perhaps on the morning of the first Friday in December. Now remember, this survey was done on a Friday late in November. So there's not that much difference in, in terms of the time. It's just a week or two later. So it might well be appropriate in this case, but one does need to remember that the final Friday in November is often the day of Black Friday, which is often one of the busiest days of the whole year in department stores. It's so even though we're doing the um, trying to get an estimate for the first Friday in December, which is also usually fairly busy in the run up to Christmas, Black Friday can be even busier than that. So it's possible that it may not be a good estimate. Certainly, if we were looking at how reliable the estimate would be for a Monday afternoon, then the model is simply not likely to be appropriate simply because the store is going to be much quieter in, in an afternoon in February than it is on a busy Friday afternoon just before the Christmas. Now why would it not be appropriate to use this estimate for somebody entering the store five minutes before the closing time of the store? 
Well, the first observation we should make is the model is predict predicting there's a 0.732 probability that the customer will spend more than 15 minutes in the store. If the customer arrives at 8, um, 8.55, just 5 minutes before it closes at 9 o'clock, there is no way the customer can wait at least, um, can be in the store for at least 15 minutes. He'll be thrown out after just 5 minutes. In fact, what we need to realise is the whole of this model has been produced on the basis of data where all of the customers spent up to about 60 minutes in the store. In other words, this model is not appropriate for anyone who arrives in the store at any time after 8 o'clock in the evening. So, could we perhaps express this by simply saying that the initial data shows customers spending 5 to 60 minutes in the store, so our model is totally inappropriate for customers arriving at just 5 minutes before closure time and should really only be applied to customers arriving before 8 o'clock. To finish this video off, like just pause the video now and work your way through slowly but steadily this particular question where again we're trying to look at a possible model for the masses of randomly chosen adult African elephants. So have a work through this video have a work through this exercise and take your solutions through to your next lesson.